the word dunamis is in the Bible 24 times. And I'm looking for a year of signs, miracles, and wonders. The dunamis power. Troy Brewer, it's great to have you on Charisma News to be able to talk about what God is saying for the year 2024. Um, and I know that you are the numbers guy. Uh, you, you've you got numbers that preach. And uh, that is a, a book that is really uh, one of the things that you're kind of known by. And uh, so whenever I think about numbers and the Bible, Troy Brewer is somebody that I want to get to know what you're, what God's speaking to you through this. So we're heading into the year 2024 what is God saying to you, brother? Well, it's a lot, John. And thank you so much for having me here. I love the Charisma family and, and I'm so grateful. Thank you, sir, for the opportunity. Well, okay. So, you know, whenever you look at the calendar, you can look at, are you going to look at it from the Hebrew calendar perspective, or are you going to look at it through the Gregorian calendar perspective? And what I say is God gave us two eyes. And I think it's important to look through both lenses. And um, if I go back and if I could just go back in time a little bit, uh, tell you, John, I've been looking forward to this year for a long, long, long time to come because mm -hmm. over the past 30 years of me seeking the Lord concerning the years to come, God's always given me a word for years and years and years ahead. Like he told me way back in 1986, he told me, keep your eye on 2020. And like I have been doing a study on 2020 all the way up until 2020, uh, 2016, 2020, and 2024 were huge on my prophetic calendars as everything changes. And mm. 2016, everything did change. 2020, everything changed. And I really believe that everything's going to change again in the year 2024. Um, as a matter of fact, I think that you have to, well, to be very honest, I've never got a word past 2024. And it's been something mm. that me and my teens have been talking about for 30 years. You got anything for 2025 or 2026? Or I'm like, I don't. And I thought, well, maybe I want to go see the Lord. I don't know. You know, why wouldn't God give me a word for anything into 2024 or past 2024? And this last year, I really understood it. And it's this, you have to have a new ear for this new year. God is literally introducing New voices. We know that his word never, ever, ever changes, but his voice absolutely changes. And his voice is changing in a very, very dramatic way. I think that, I think that God is literally, this is like a year of the, of, of the Malchus miracle, you know, where the Lord mm. literally puts a new ear. He had his, he had his ear chopped off um, in the garden. And then God and the King Jesus himself literally had to place an ear on him. And then of course we know that, 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 that John would say, and his name is Malchus, meaning he was known later on and he was, and he was known among the Greeks. And so I think that God has given us a new year. And I think that if we're going to look into the year 2024, I think that we have to understand that 5784 on the Hebrew calendar is the year of the open door. And that that overlays with 2024 in a tremendous way. And I'd like to, I'd like to take you through it. So are you ready to go? Absolutely. Let's do it. And I like how, uh, what, 5784 is the year of the open door. And that's the name that God gave you for your church in in, uh, in Texas. So it's the open door yeah, experience. I'm so happy. I think that's a really cool thing for you guys. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, I'm, I'm very happy that it's the year of the open door because I am the pastor of Open Door Church. But if you go back, if you look at the 84th verse of the Old Testament, it's 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 literally able at the altar. And the Lord told me that this is going to be a year of the altered state, that we have to learn how to live at the altar in the midst of the altered state. And then if you look at the 84th verse of the New Testament, it is Matthew 4.20, and it says that immediately they left their nets and they followed him. So we have always been people that are asking God for suddenlies. God is asking us for immediately. I need you to drop what you're doing and get with a new program. And so I preached that all throughout the year going into 5784. And then, of course, the 57, the 5784th verse, John, is a game changer. It's Deuteronomy 32, verse 25. And it actually describes the events that happened on October the 7th in Israel. Wow. And it says, in, in the street, the sword will make them childless. In their homes, terror will reign. The young men and the young women shall perish, and the infants and those with gray hair. Now, 
that is a perfect description mm. for October 7th and the Hamas terrorist attack. And that is the 5,784th verse. Now, going into the year 2024, the overlay of that is this. The number 24 is a number that's related to priesthood, and it's a number that is related to uh, the encirclement of God's camp or the throne of Jesus himself being in the midst of people. So how is that? Wow. Well, the word lamb appears in the book of Revelation exactly 24 times, and it's always associated with the throne of Jesus. Revelation 5.13, and I heard every creature in heaven, on earth, under the earth, and under the sea, all of them saying, to him who sits upon the throne and the lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. So there's 24 lambs in the book of Revelation attached to the throne. And then there's 24 elders that also surround the throne. So what we find is the theme in the word of God prophetically with the number 24 many times is associated with a throne room scene. So the judgment of God is a big deal. The authority of the Lord is a big deal. Worship is extremely big. Um, John, the number 12 is a number that represents perfect government. So we have a 12 and a 12, which equals 24. And it has to do with the manifold government of God with King Jesus himself seated, uh, seated upon the throne. So I, I was looking this up this morning, uh, knowing I was going to talk to you. And I just thought, I need to look up the word judge. And I found that the word judge is found 24 times in the New Testament. So there you have wow. Jesus, wow. the righteous judge. And I, I have to tell you before we go any further with this, brother, God was not caught by surprise on October the 7th and how it, how it changed the world. It literally changed the world. Um, he's, I want to tell you, he saw every single bit of that and he still sees today. Mm -hmm. It is so important that you and I, as people of God, that we remain kingdom people, that we remain loyal, that we remain faithful and that uh, Jesus is, in fact, our king. So in 2024, John, um, we see that God is judging from his throne. And those who have passed the test, so important that we pass the test. Uh, God is literally handing out to the faithful, to the loyal. He's handing out supernatural blessings, commands, permissions, and upgraded authority for the time to come. The Lord is literally Amen. upgrading people that have qualified. And I think that just since 2020, man, we've had to qualify for some things. We've had to decide to be loyal. We've had to be faithful to get through some things. And I see God Almighty bringing tremendous upgrade in the year 2024, and it's all connected with his throne. It's fascinating, isn't it? Yeah, it's really, it's really fascinating. I, I love how God speaks to you through these numbers. And I know that there's there's more to meets the eye than just the words that are on the paper in the Bible. I mean, each in the Hebrew language, and I believe in Greek too, like there, each letter I know in Hebrew, each letter also represents a number. And so there is important things that are connected with that. Yeah. You know, in the Greek language, uh, with their, with actually with their alphabet, there's 20, there's 24 letters in the Greek alphabet. Mm. And yes. Every single letter also represents a number the same as in the Hebrew, um, language, every single letter also represents a number. And of course it also represents a prophetic sign and the prophetic sign for the four for the 5784 or for the year 2024, the prophetic sign for the four is an open door. And mm. I think that that's what we're talking about because because what we see is we see that we're moving in from 2023 into 2024. And just exactly like that, we're moving from Psalms 23 into Psalms 24. And Psalms 24 is all about open doors in heaven. It's all about lift up your heads, you heavenly gates, who is the king of glory, right? It's about going through the valley of the shadow of death and seeing God Almighty arise in a tremendous way. Yeah. I think that that's a big part of it as well. Um, I was looking at this morning as well, I was looking at, you know, in the heavens, there is a star in the heavens that God Almighty placed there within our firmament that's in Ursa Minor or the Little Dipper, and it's it's the number 24. And it's actually numbered as 24. It's, it's 24 Ursa Minor. It's the closest star that there is to the North Star, the Polar Star. And the North mm -hmm. Star or the Polar Star represents the throne of Jesus. Everything circles it. 
saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and who is and who is yet to come. It's the 50th brightest star. And 50 means jubilee. That means that you're set free mm. if you can find mm. the throne. It's, it's the North Star. If you ever find it, you're never lost again, right? So all that is themes of the throne of King Jesus placed within God's creation. I think that um, this prophetically speaks of the judgment of Jesus for his redeemed people to be set free in the year 2024. Watch watch a great move of God take place in 2024 where addictions fall off. Watch a great move of God in 2024 where there's a revival against pornography, where men are no longer bound by that kind of sexual sin. Watch there be a big sweep and a big move of God as far as setting people for, um, set free this next year. Wow. Wow. Yep. That, that freedom is really important. I mean, because if we can get our people you know, God's people walking in freedom, then we're going to be a good example for people that are, that are yet to become into God's kingdom, yet to know Jesus. Because if we're walking in freedom, those that are in bondage see freedom and they want it. And so that's going to help, help a lot of people come into that revival. You know, I can, I can see that when we see the number 24 and looking into the year 2024, that when God likes to encircle things, he likes to stamp the number four on it. So we can see mm. like the throne has 24 elders around it. There's 24 hours in a day. The world has 24,000 miles around it. And it has to do with being encircled. I shall be a wall of fire around you. And I will also be the glory in the midst of you. I think that the Lord really wants to burn bright in the midst of us this year. And uh, our role is to make sure that Jesus is sitting on the throne of our own hearts more than ever, ever, Mm -hmm. ever before. It also speaks of global impact, right? It speaks of global sanctions, global mandates, warfare on a global basis. All those things, you know, everything that we're looking at now is worldwide, everything. And Mm -hmm. I think more than anything... Uh, Brother John, I think, I think more than anything, I think that this next year, the big, huge theme, uh, one of the prophetic, and, you know, I have a small layer, somebody else has a small layer, you know, we all prophesy in part, but the midnight hour is a tremendous theme for me. It's the 24, mm-hmm. it's the midnight hour. And I think that we have to learn how to live like we are actually living in the end times, looking unto Jesus, walking in the fear of the Lord. Um, us being so sold out toward the imminent and the glorious return of the Lord Jesus Christ and understand that our redemption is actually drawn nigh. So I was looking up words that have to do with, you know, 24, right? Has to do with final hour. Did you know that the word watchful is in the Bible? Be ye watchful 24 times. I was like, oh, yeah. What about this? The word redemption is in the Bible 24 times. Like, are you kidding me? Like, nope. The word, I'm sorry, the word repentance. So the the command, repent and be watchful. The word repentance is in the Bible 24 times. And the word, and the word be watchful is in the Bible 24 times. This is a year that God's going to speak so strongly about his imminent and his glorious return. And he's looking for people who are looking for him. Hmm. Um, we have to learn how to live like that. Amen. <laughs> Amen. We got to be, con- we got to be consistently looking for Jesus because there's nothing else. There really isn't, but man, there's, yeah. ha- I got to know, Pastor Troy, how much time do you devote into looking for all these numbers in the Bible or that or God does, or God, or does God just have them pop out to you? Like ha- tell us how you can, how you do your research with this. Cause this is fascinating. Uh, well, number one, I've got a great team. And so yeah. I've got a couple of people here with me, even in this room right now that I just tell them all the time, Hey, look up and see how many times this word is in a Bible, how many times that word's in a Bible. And we do that, but it's also a lifestyle that we live and mm-hmm. I can't read anything or read any kind of scripture that I don't see the numbers in it. It's, it's actually a lifestyle. So I can't help but read the word and see the numbers that are actually in it. I just, I just can't help it. It's just the way that God has programmed me. It's like the very first time I, I ever saw 1 Corinthians 13, right, uh, which is the love chapter. Uh, mm-hmm. I'd never read it before. I was a young man. I was brand new saved. I was 19, and I just counted it. And there's 16 of those. There's 16 attributes to the love of God. And then I began to realize every time that God is talking about love, he likes to stamp the number 16 on it all the way through the word of God. 
And then I found the 16 Jehovah titles, right? How many are those? 16. It's like the love of God is revealed in 16 diff- um, through 16 different faces. And so wow. I don't know, wow. brother. It's just a great big part of who we are and uh, what we do. It's, it's a lot of fun. And the Bible is prolific with it. Amen. Amen. So what, what else is God saying? And thanks, thanks for, for peeling back the layers a little bit and letting us see how God speaks to Troy. <laughs> well, thanks. Thank you so much. I, I also, I, I recognize that the word dunamis is in the Bible 24 times. And mm. I'm looking for a year of signs, miracles, and wonders, dunamis power, um, simple solutions to complicated issues, uh, unusual miracles um, in this year. You know, it's, it's interesting to know that in the 36, there's 36 miracles that the Bible records of Jesus. And we know that Jesus did many more than that. Um, right. the Bible says the book of the end of the, at the end of the book of John, that if it was all written down, that the world could not contain the books. But the Bible is very specific to just give us 36 miracles that Jesus did. 24 of those were healings. 24 of the 36 miracles are actually healings. So that is a huge indication to me, both biblically, prophetically, and just as far as the kingdom is concerned, that the timing of miracles is right now. And I'm looking for, I'm looking for this to be a tremendous year of healings and of miracles. Um, I was mentioning earlier that the number, well, let me, let me just stay on that theme. You know, the 24th time that Jesus is mentioned is when he heals the mother, when he, when he heals the mother-in-law of Peter. That's the 24th time. I was looking at all the 24 times that somebody has mentioned today, and so many of them are associated with some form of healing all the way out through um, throughout wow. the Word of God. So I tell all of your readers and your watchers and your listeners that this is a time where the Spirit of the Lord is moving from His throne in righteous execution of judgment, where He's bringing redemption and he is bringing healings. He's bringing miracles. He's encircling those who love them, right? He's doing things on a global scale. Um, the word water and the word spirit appear 24 times in the Gospel of John. So again, all of these are just indications of the kind of theme of the season that we're actually moving into. And I think it's all worth pressing into. Wow. <laughs> wow, there's so much there. Wow. So as you're... As you're- kind of incorporating all of these things and you're looking at this, this piece and this piece and this piece, how is God helping you kind of tie this in together for kind of a cohesive message? Well, I think that we have to be really good at giving people hope today. We have to be really good at the demonstration of the spirit. We have to be really good at giving the gospel as opposed to the news feed, right? Mm. And I think that the prophetic helps us do that so well. Um, once you see this, you can't unsee it. And it's also so personal. It is so personal. I, I think that, you know, I'm going to be, I'm going to be in Israel. I'm actually going to Gaza in Israel and we're doing a bunch of outreaches to the idea of soldiers while we're there. And the message that I'm carrying there is the acceptable year of the Lord. I know that it's a tremendous election year. There's some tremendous signs in the heavens. We have the next great American eclipse is going to happen on, on right. April the 8th which is another, you know, Jesus said there will be sign and there will be signs in the sun and in the moon and also within the stars. And we know that it's seven years. It begins another seven year cycle because the last great American eclipse happened seven years ago in August of 2017. And so it's speaking of seven year cycles now, and that is a really big deal. That's such a big deal. I would say this, if, if, if you're not sure that that's a sign from heaven, uh, know that it happens on April the 8th. And look up and look up Exodus 4 8. Look up Exodus April 8. And, and, and it's God Almighty telling Moses, if they will not believe you for the first sign, they will believe you for the second sign. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's 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 pretty daggum significant. And wow. um, there's huge, there's tremendous signs in the heavens. Uh, the threat of global war is bigger this year than it's ever been within our life. Uh, the threat of nuclear things, like these, these things are too scary. They are scary things. These are the end times. These are the last days. And we're not a cruise ship anymore. We now have to be a battleship. We have to know where to find hope, how to find hope, and how to tap into the power of God. God Almighty does not want anybody to live a powerless life this year, no matter what the future holds. Amen. Amen. You mentioned eclipses. And I know 
um, it was historically, I think God speaks to his, the Jewish people through the moon and you know, mm, through, the, through right. the signs in the moon and the Gentiles through the sun. And so when you have an eclipse coming, it's literally the, the moon coming in front of the sun. And mm -hmm. so it's the, kind of the, the, um, the culmination of these things. And so um, we've got blood moons, we've got eclipses. And I remember several years ago, uh, there was a whole thing about the, the blood moons. And uh, it was, I talked to somebody who was really studying that at that point and had written a couple books. And I asked him, you know, what is this, what does this mean? And it's, he said, basically, God really wants our attention. We need to look up. We need to, you know, pay attention to the Lord. Um, and so, and what he's saying. And so you, you mentioned about this eclipse and I know you've done uh, a good bit of research and you're, you're looking at where the eclipse is going to be and it's crossing at a unique point. Um, actually those things, could you just talk about that for a, for a little bit? Oh, uh, you're quite the troublemaker, John. You're trying to get me in trouble. <laughs> Everybody already thinks I'm crazy. And now, no, I'm so happy to, because, because this is the word of the Lord. You know, Jesus yeah. Christ made all of these things and God Almighty rules from his throne over the heavens and over the earth. And Jesus himself actually said, there will be signs in the sun and in the moon and within the stars. And so, no, it is a tremendous sign. And you, and, and brother, you hit the nail on the head whenever you said it, that when God, when God prophetically speaks to the son, he's speaking to the Gentile nations, but he's actually just speaking to the nations, right? The Gentiles, mm -hmm. that's why our Gregorian calendar is based off of the prophetic marker of the sun. When God's speaking through the moon, he is speaking to his covenant people, He's the, which means it's either going to be Israel or it's strictly going to be the church. And then when God speaks through the stars, he's speaking to his children of inheritance. So he told Abraham, Let, uh, come here, I want to show you the plan. This is what your seed looks like. And he shows him the stars. So when we see this eclipse take place, we need to, we, in order for us to understand the eclipse and what God is speaking through the eclipse has taken place this year, we need to go back seven years and know that that, that when, whenever seven years ago in, uh, let's see, August of uh, 2017, when that eclipse happened, it, you're like, well, those eclipses happen all the time. It was the first great American eclipse that had happened since 1776. Yeah. So there had never since, since the founding birth of our nation, right at the time of, our, of the birth of our nation, God declared a word through the sun about our nation being among the nations now. That happened in 1776. Mm -hmm. We've had many uh, eclipses, but not one that only touched the United States. And it entered in at Salem, Oregon, and it went across seven cities named Salem, and it exited out of Fort Sumter, where the Civil War actually began. And, and actually, and at the time that on the day that it went across, there was actually a race riot that was taking place in Charlotte. It was actually taking place there. Now, this next, wow. this next great eclipse that is going to take place is going to happen um, on, let's see, April the 8th, which is at Passover time, which is mm -hmm. amazing to me. This is going to happen at Passover. It's going to happen on April the 8th. And it is going to enter in through Eagles Pass, Texas. And it's going to come across right across, going to, uh, it's going to come right across my ranch. And it's going to enter out through the Northeast. And where it crosses the first line, and so it literally creates an X across the United States. And you're like, well, that means we're being X'd out. Well, in Hebrew, the X means a prophetic sign. It means the signature of God. That's what wow. it actually means. And so where it actually crosses over at is a place called Little Egypt. And so we know Memphis is there. That is an Egyptian name. All those cities that are there in that one area is called Little Egypt. And that's where those two, that's where the two lines actually intercept. And we have actually taken a NASA photo and shown down to the square foot of where they intersect mm -hmm. at. And they intercept on a street that is called Salem. Now, remember oh, wow. the first one came across, <laughs> the first one came across seven different cities called Salem. And the, and the, the dark of it is only 70 miles across. And it literally came over the top of seven different cities in seven different states named Salem. The next one crosses over and where they intersect is literally on a street called Salem. So like, well, what is that? Wow. Well, it's, it is literally Jesus. It's the Prince of Peace. 
So we know like Jerusalem, right? The city mm-hmm. of peace, right? Absalom, you know, son of peace. We know that, Je- we know that Jesus is the Prince of Peace. And it's, it's, it's screaming to us, look unto Jesus. Look unto Jesus. Our nation was founded upon principles of looking unto Jesus, and we cannot let that go. We have to hold on to that. There's a peace that is found on the other side of war. There is a peace that a shalom of the Lord that is only found from his presence. And God Almighty is definitely calling his people back into his mighty presence. Wow. He really is. And um, isn't there a place like a, a garden, uh, like with a, with some sculptures and like a, an empty cross that's going to be like right at that, at that place? I, I talked to somebody that uh, is an artist that has put that together. Uh, are, you, are you familiar with yeah. that? The, are you talking about the Coming King Sculpture Garden in uh, in the South Texas? I believe so. Yeah, I believe yeah, so. Man, yeah, Max, that's probably what it is. Yeah, that brother's name is Max, and yeah, by, we go to that garden all the time. We go there, we pray there, we cry out to God all the time. It's such a prophetic place. He's got a he has a giant open cross there that is seventy seven feet and mm. seven inches high. And he's got all these prophetic symbols all over the place, and uh, it's yeah, the shadow is going to come directly over the top of that. Sure is. Kerrville, Texas. Wow. So there's there's a lot of things that even the names of the locations where these where this eclipse is going to affect uh, or, or cross over those things yep. that you were just talking about are are very significant. So what do we do about this? You know, we're heading into 2024. We're recording this. It's uh, December 18th as we're actually doing this right now. Um, you know, on the Hebrew calendar, it's 5784. We're going into uh, 2024. We, there's a lot of things to go that are going to happen in this coming year. Brother, what do we do? And also, would you just pray for those that are that are listening and watching? I will. And here's what I would say. I would say the Lord is calling his people to be stable in the midst of great instability because Jesus is our rock. We do and we are living in a time of an altered state where things are changing dramatically, even faster than we can keep up with it. Um, do, not, do not lose heart. Your help comes from the Lord. If you're like, well, I can't, I can't, I just can't imagine everything changing dramatic, any more dramatic than it, than it did in 2020. Let me ask you this. Did you prosper in 2020? Did the Lord protect you in 2020? Did, was God Almighty with you? Yes, the world was different. It was completely different. But you found the Lord and you found his stability in a new way like what you haven't before. Um, I know that a lot of people have great hope in whatever their choice is um, concerning our elections and hope for our America and, and hope for our borders and hope for our economy and all this. And here's what I would say about that. I would say this. Um, I don't trust the world systems as far as I can trust any of them anymore. And I don't mean to lose heart or any of those things. Like, no, my help comes from the Lord. Because every system that can be shaken is, in fact, being shaken. And I would also see this, too. Whoever the president is this next time, you know, I was actually in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost whenever President Trump actually moved the embassy from uh, Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. I was there during that time. And a lot of people missed that it happened on Pentecost. Well, I didn't. I was like, oh, no, this is a big deal. I would say this. It is, it is so important that the leaders of the body of Jesus, who has counsel with whoever our next president is, that, they, that the Oval Office looks more like heaven than it looks like hell, and that the, and that the church doesn't come back looking like Washington, D.C., but that Washington, D.C. begins to look like the church. And I'm not sure that we have passed that test in uh, years past. I think that it is very important in this year to come, that we understand that our political aspiration, again, I'm a very political guy. I, if you cut me, I will bleed red, white, and blue. I'm a Texan, which makes me an American on steroids. I do a work on the border, <laughs> I promise you. I, I can put a flag in the ground. But I can also mm-hmm. tell you this. I'm not just a resident of the United States. I'm a resident of heaven that is passing through the United States. And we need to be more determined this year to live as if Jesus is coming back at any given moment than ever, ever, ever before. I'm determined to have peace. I'm determined to prosper. I'm determined to have simple solutions to complicated issues, uh, the wisdom of the Lord. And I am determined to bring heaven everywhere I go this year. So you want me to pray for everybody? 
Yes, please. Okay. All right. Well, Father God, sir, I want to lift up all my friends, God, that are watching all over the planet. And I declare, God, that this is a year, sir, that we will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Father, we pray, God, for global revival, 24,000 miles around the globe. We pray, God, for your kingdom to come and your will to be done. 24 elders around the throne. We declare, God, that our daytime and our nighttime belongs to you, 24 hours in a day. Father, I declare and decree in the name of King Jesus that our prayer is more effective and that, God, that we truly work, God, that we truly walk in the priesthood of the Most High God like never, ever, ever before. Father God, I lift up our children. I thank you, God, for a revival in the children realm this year. God, we come against nuclear threat. And Father, you've shown me both New York City and also San Antonio, Texas. God, you told me, God, pray for New York City, pray for San Antonio, Texas. And God, that's what we do right here, right now. God, we just pray a Psalms 91 hedge of protection around those places. And God, that you would thwart the plans of our enemies, Lord. Father, I pray, Lord God, sir, that in the midst of the economy, Lord, that you would show us how to walk in the power to gain wealth. And Lord God, I love you, sir. And I praise you. And I declare, God, that we are loyal to you. You are our God. We are your people. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Pastor Troy Brewer, thank you so much for sharing what God has been speaking to you through numbers and through signs in the skies about what we can be looking forward to in this next year, in this next season. Thank you, brother, for joining us here. Thank you, my friend. God bless you, sir.